Go ahead and turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 5. Just touched a little bit on this last week. This will be part 5 on our series on theology. Who remembers our, our subject last time? Who remembers what was the subject of the, the study? That is, that is correct. We, we looked at that. Belief. 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 Uh, what we believe. Believing in one God is not enough. You know, what do we believe in, right? Yeah. Right. And there's a lot of things other people believe in, which is, and this is what I was saying, false righteousness. And the waters are muddy. Was the subject of this book. The title of my sermon last week was Muddy Waters. There are so many other belief systems out there. How do you, how are people to choose what to believe? Uh, mine would say that all people believe in something. All people believe in something. All right. So in Romans chapter 5, verse 19, uh, before we get started, let's pray once more. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come and learn more about your word. We ask that you help us to learn and retain what we hear. Lord, help me to say what you want me to say and to get out of your way. People hear you this morning and not me. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Romans chapter 5, verse 19, is talking about the sin nature of Adam. As far as one, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous, that one being Jesus Christ. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So we don't have the law to be saved by, the law is to show us that we need a Savior. We looked a little bit about all of these other different beliefs. We've discussed some beliefs that Baptists believe, some that the Catholics believe. There's, there's um, more religion in the world today than can be counted. I believe the top five are uh, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Judaism. Those are the top five. I think they actually are either. I, I might switch Buddhism and Hinduism, but um, and that covers the vast majority of the planet. By the way, the vast majority of people believe in one of those things. Okay, so. We looked also in uh, Matthew chapter 7 last time. It says in verse, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13. It says, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Okay. Why are there few that find it? You've got three billion people that claim to be Christians on the planet. That's not a few. Why are they not finding life? Okay? And then it tells us the answer to that question in the next verse. This is Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly there are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. We looked at this a little bit. What does that mean? Well, I have met preachers that will change their message to sound like they agree with you. This is common. A missionary that wants support. He'll sound like, like he's, he agrees with you. A pastor that comes in and wants to pastor church, he'll sound like he agrees with you. Why? Because you don't, you don't get people to follow you. You don't get sheep to follow you if you look like the wolf. But if you look like another sheep, I told a young lady that uh, works with me this week, uh, we were talking about churches. And I said, beware of men in three-piece suits with black books saying, trust me, I know what I'm talking about. 
just believe what I'm telling you, that's fine. You'll be all right. No, folks don't believe me. I could be nuts. But this, this is different. This is not man's opinion. When I say something, that's my opinion, unless it comes out of here. So, in Matthew chapter 7, now we read this last week, so we won't go over it all, talks about the foundation, building the house on the rock. The house on the sand fell. So what foundation you build your house on, your belief, your faith on, makes all the difference. So if you build your foundation on what the preacher says, hmm. that's sinking sand, folks. If you build your foundation on what your parents taught you is right, they might even said most of the right things or the good things. They might say, hey, yes, you should you should go to church, you should read your Bible. You but if that's what you build your faith and your foundation on, that's no good either. The only foundation of our faith that has any value at the end of this life is what? Jesus Christ. He is the solid rock. We learn from this passage in Matthew 7 that there are an awful lot of people that claim the name of Jesus claim the title of Christian but God says no 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 you're built on sand and not on the rock so what is the basis of our beliefs are we supposed to just have blind faith how do you sort the truth from the lies how do you know what I'm telling you is correct we have the word of God we're not basing this on the word of Josh God just works wishy-washy at best. This book, this word of God, is how we can have the boldness <clears throat> to go up to the Muslim and say, I'm sorry, what you believe is not right. I know that what you believe is not right because God has shown me in his word what salvation is. So we have the boldness to go up to our, our brethren are not really our brethren. We say, I'm sorry. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that you have to repent of your sins and ask for forgiveness and pray this prayer to go to heaven. I can boldly say that because God says it. I don't have to wonder if my doctrine is correct. This is not my doctrine. It's God's. In Luke chapter 21, verse 33, it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. We have a more sure word of prophecy in the scripture. Turn to 1 Peter. We'll get into our text today. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 1. This is a long passage, but all of it is important. So we're going to start at the beginning, and we're going to read this chapter, because all of this pertains to our subject today. So 1 Peter chapter 1, in verse 1, it says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, 
being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Of which salvation the prophets had inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them, that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges, According to every man's work, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who formerly was <coughs> barely was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God, seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word by which, which by the gospel is preached unto you. Okay. This passage that Paul writes, or that Peter writes, is outlining on what we base our salvation. And it is not through works here, corruptible things. It is not through tradition or a father's. It is not through something that we have done. It is not something that can be changed or judged by man, but with the precious blood of Christ. Salvation is found only in Christ. And we have his word. If I were to give you my word on something, what does that mean? Very little. <laughs> Thank you. What, what do I mean by that? Oh. I, it's a promise, right? But if I, if I give my word to Ashley on something, I'm saying I will do thus, right? <clears throat> I got in trouble one time. I, gave, I made a promise that she could get a dog. I didn't want a dog, but I made the promise. So we have a dog. So, um, exactly. I have to be careful what I promise because I try to keep my promises. But like Brother Mark says, it's worth very little because I broke the promises. But the nature of a promise is that it is immune to changing circumstances. So when God gave us his word, his word says, I will provide your salvation. Amen. And it is promised. See, as Brother Mark pointed it out so, so eloquently, my word's not worth much. I might say, I promise to see you next week. And then I get the car wreck, and I, or something happens, and I get sick, and I can't come, right? Well, I broke a promise. It might not be my fault. I intended to, but I'm human. Things happen to me. Ooh. What 
is the worth of a promise made to an omnipotent, made from an omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God. That promise has some value, my friends. Right. Power behind it. There is power behind that promise. That promise, we talked a few weeks ago about uh, the percentage possibility, the odds of of evolution being the Big Bang happening, right? What are the odds of that? And Brother Mark, if you and I would go to a casino and bet those odds, we would not, right? Because that would be right. foolish. What are the odds that what God says is going to happen is going to happen? 100%. I'd bet those odds any day. Right. If, you, if you told me that, hey, God says that whatever, gambling is terrible. I don't gamble at all, so this is a terrible example. If God says that the, the, the next hand is going to be the winning hand, put all your money in, okay. I'm all in. I'm all in on what God says is going to happen. Why? Because everything happen. he's ever promised to happen That's right. has happened. That's right. So folks, we have the word of God. You don't have the word of Josh. It's not worth much. You have the word of God that says, I sent my son to earth to die and pay for your sin. And not only did I do that, I accepted that payment. And you and I are good. Your sin is paid for. Amen. And it is this that forms the foundation of our belief. Not things that we can figure out, not things that we can study and do, but we have learned that God has promised us. And we believe that promise. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 10. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 10 says, According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and then another <clears throat> buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, and the rest of that's missing. One second. Get it turned in and started. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall be shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Just like that story in Matthew chapter 7, when the rains came, the man that built his house in the sand, the house probably looked the same as the man who built his house in the rock. Probably very similar building style, architectural, building materials. It's all fine. He probably even put more work into put making it stronger, because it's easier to build on a rock than it is to build on sand. But it didn't matter. When it came time to test the integrity of the foundation, there was nothing of value there. Turn to Romans. Yep, turn to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. I want to point out here, the gospel of Christ. There are other gospels out there. There are other stories people tell and say that this is the truth, this is the gospel. But there is no other true gospel other than the gospel of Christ. So we see here that it is, it is the power of God under salvation to everyone that believeth, to Jew first, also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth 
and unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Turn to Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. Verse one. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they keep to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Turn back to uh, go to Second Peter this time. Second Peter chapter one. Find Second Peter chapter one, verse sixteen. You know, I've had a couple of interesting conversations where I've been asked a legitimately like a good question. Well, Josh, everybody thinks that they're right. <clears throat> no religion goes. Well, yeah, I follow this religion, but it's not the right one. Everybody believes in something. Josh, like everybody, I've, I've talked to and I've, and it's mostly uh, atheists that have this, that, this argument. Say, well, Josh, I've read, the, I've read the Quran, I've read the Book of Mormon, I've read the Bible, I've read all these other things, and all of it seems, you know, they're well written, but none of it's any better than the others. I don't believe any of that. I believe that, that when I die, nothing happens. I don't believe I have a soul. I, I believe that I just can't. And I said, well, I can tell you, and this sounds extremely arrogant, but it's not. It's bold. I am right in this belief. Not because of me, because I'm smarter than the rest, because this is the truth. And this person asked me, he said, well, you're going to follow this belief the rest of your life. Said, yes, I well, what happens when you get to the end of all things and you're wrong? According to your beliefs, I'll rot in a casket somewhere and finally get a good nap because at the time I was working like 100 hours a week. So let me ask you, and this man had just had a baby. His baby was like six weeks old. Let me ask you, Mark, which was his name. Uh, Powell, yeah. Let me ask you, Mark, what if I'm right? Just think about that for two seconds. If you're right, I've wasted nothing but a few years of my life. If I'm right, you and your children who follow after you will have wasted all eternity. He didn't like that answer very much. He ended our conversation. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables <clears throat> when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. In other words, this is not a fairy tale, we've seen it. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. In other words, we don't have to make this up, we were there. There's eyewitnesses. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were in the Holy Mount, verse 19, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well, ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Turn to John chapter 5. Turn to John chapter 5, verse 31. 
we'll wrap it up. Now, I've studied more in recent years since that conversation with my friend who thought that there was no life after death. And uh, it's an interesting read, but there's a book, I forget the author's name, who uh, titled his book, The Case for the Resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's an interesting read. I don't agree with everything he says. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not doctrine by any means, right? But he set out to see why we have, to see if there was physical proof of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you discount this, he said, okay, people don't believe this. But all right, that's fine. People don't understand, you know, people don't believe that's the word of God, that's fine. Let's see if there's any other proof out there. So he set out to find documents, to find records, to find history, to see if there was anything that matched up with this book. And he found mountains of it. He talked about, um, and I don't remember the names, but the people in the first century church that wrote eyewitness accounts of talking with Jesus, seeing Jesus. The Roman records of his crucifixion, they agreed that happened. The Roman records afterwards where they searched for his body. The first century church all saying that they saw a man appeared to be Jesus Christ walking around afterwards. And on and on and on the stories went. Of all the records that they'd found, of all these first-hand eyewitness accounts that all lined up with this book that's written for us today. And another part that was very interesting of that is this, okay, what does science say about the soul? Does man have a soul? Does, can, can we decide whether or not, scientifically? So he set about to find what man might think about it. And what shocked him is he found tens of thousands of what med medical uh, records call an out-of-body experience. People during surgeries that could recall standing above their own body when their heart was stopped or when their brain was, functions were slowed, tens of thousands of people across time had said, I remember looking down at my body and, and see, thinking I was dead. And then having incredible accounts of, well, how do you know you didn't just imagine that? Because after the surgery, when I was awake, I stood up and I walked over and I could recall the serial number on top of the medical equipment that you cannot see from where I was. And I looked to see if I'd made that up and no, I did not. It matched what I'd seen in my vision. Or a person, well, I walked through the wall and went next door and saw what was next door. Tens of thousands of accounts of people that recall being in existence when they were not in their body. You don't hear about that in medical journals. But over and over and over again, that out-of-body experience is recorded. So scientifically, that gives us an idea that, yes, there is a soul. I am a soul. And my body is just what I inhabit. So for those that would say, well, life ends at death, what about all these people? They're just all mass hallucinations, all shared mass hallucinations that agree? Or figuring that one out. It's interesting. It's interesting, isn't it? How how man and, and medical professionals and everybody else wants to say, well, there's just no proof. There's no proof. There's no proof. Okay. No proof will ever be proof for you then. Here's all the proof you need. And if that's not enough for you, no proof will ever be proof for you. There's more if you want it. But if God's word isn't good enough for you, no right. amount of proof right. will ever convince you. In verse 31 of John chapter 5, If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. He sent it to John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I received not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. 
He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape, and ye have not heard, and ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Folks, we can either take God at his word and go to heaven, or we can say that's not good enough. And not. He will believe anything. We have the word of God, and that is the foundation of our faith, and that gives us the boldness to say, if you have a belief in any gospel other than the gospel of Christ, you've got no foundation for your faith. Right? You have to turn there, but I, I'll close with this. It's in Psalm chapter 40, Psalm number 40, verse 1. And it is to the chief musician, a psalm of David. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined <coughs> unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, Amen. and established my goings. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. <coughs> Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for this church, this opportunity to read the word of God and to learn. Lord, I pray that we retain what we have learned today. Lord, I pray that we use what we have looked at today to help other people. Lord, put people in our path that we may witness to them, and that we may help them see that your word is true. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> Right. 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 They have motions for the Bible.